Well, guys, it's time to check back in with Chronically Stephanie. So check it out. Week five, post-op. She's starting to look good. She's got her hair done. She's got her pretty girl glasses on. I'm really impressed with how she's already looking. What this is is not anything to do with weight loss or weight gain. This is confidence. She's starting to feel good about herself. Five weeks through, let's see how she's doing. Hey, guys, it's Stephanie. I just wanted to come on real quick and share a little victory I just had. Um, I started this journey and I was in a 3X top and I just tried on larges and they fit. Um, I had to try on a bunch of pairs uh, just to make sure that the larges actually fit and it wasn't just a certain brand and I am just, I'm thrilled um, and relieved. I had I've been having uh, slow weight loss. Um, it was actually stuck on 209 for a few days, and it just finally went down to 206. Um, but it's really hard when you're putting in the hard work and you're just not seeing the numbers go down. Um, I don't know about anyone else, but I don't see it in myself that I'm losing. Um, but the numbers help me know that I am, even though I have people around me who tell me that I've lost weight, um, I'm just not seeing it. And I Sometimes you have to go with the numbers because the weight doesn't always show. It's just like golf. Sometimes you can get better at driving. You can get better at chipping. You can even get better at putting, but it just doesn't reflect in the score. One thing we can do though is take a look at the numbers. So if your waist is a size 40, all of a sudden, don't be surprised if that that they, your belt area is fitting a little bit looser. Maybe you're down to a waist size 38. You know what I mean? Your pounds are going to fluctuate a little, especially at the beginning, and you're, they're not going to go down as fast as you want them to, but that's where you got to be patient. Patient, Stephanie. I don't know how long it does take uh, for people's heads to catch up with their bodies because I've heard that it can take some time. Um, so I wanted to share that. Uh, I guess this is my five-week weigh in. Um, I started this journey on September 9th uh, is when I had my surgery, gastric bypass, ruin Y, and I weighed 224. Um, I thought I was going by my scale um, in the previous videos of what uh, my surgery date weight was, but at my two-week visit, they told me that my weight was 224 on the day of um, my operation. So, um, I'm using that now. Um, and that's part of why the weight loss has gone so slow too, I think. I mean, partly it's because I'm losing weight slowly, but also, um, their scale had me weighing less than I had originally thought I weighed on my surgery date. So, um, today I weighed in at 206 point something. Is it just me or is low self-esteem just the cruelest thing? She went from her highest that she admitted, the 250 range, to now she's in the low 200s and she doesn't even notice it, right? If you can't notice it in the number wise, and I don't consider that real, she can notice it. If you go from 235 to, oh, I was only 225, oh, now I'm 206 or whatever she said, that's significant weight loss. That's something to be proud of. Many of you aren't going to see that in your first month, not by any means. So we have to take victories in other ways. So like I said, if your waist is feeling looser, if your shoes are feeling looser because our, our feet gain weight, just like we do. So when you're losing weight, your feet are going to get a little bit smaller. Your shoes might feel looser. Those are victories, guys. I'm sorry, I don't remember. Um, so I don't know. It's slow for five weeks, but it's coming off in inches. I, I do wish that I would have um, started with measuring myself, and I think I'm going to start doing that now. Um, it's just it's reassuring to be down in clothes sizes. And uh, a little update on how I'm feeling. I... I'm starting to get more and more energy um, each day. I think 
Um, part of it coincided with uh, my time of the month. I have a history of getting really tired um, the days leading up to and during. And I think coupled with recovering from the weight loss surgery, it just wiped me out. So I'm hoping that that will correct itself. Um, I am taking all my vitamins and I'm doing my best on my protein and my water. It's funny, I found in the beginning that I was more able to get my water in and my food. Um, today, I'm still not really interested in food. I still look at it as a job um, that I have to get in, and you know what, I'm not doing that great of a job. So I'm going to continue to work on that. Um, another thing that I need to be doing is exercising more. Um, I haven't been doing a good job at that. Uh, I don't really have a good excuse. I mean, other than not having the energy, but I heard that working out will give me energy. So um, it's just getting that first, it, you know, it's just getting my shoes on and going that I have the hardest time with. So I needed to tell myself about that. What a perfect place to stop. We'll check in on Stephanie. Stephanie, you're doing a great job. Stay positive. Ladies and gentlemen at home, you got to be positive. But uh, I like what she just said there. Put your shoes on. Guys, let's go for a walk. One of these days, I hope the aliens just pop out of the clouds and just start shooting everywhere, lasers and cosmic rays, the whole nine yards. The whole nine yards. And they make us their sex slaves. God, that would be gnarly. <laughs> Could you imagine being a sex slave to those things? And their number one goal is just to procreate because they're really not aliens. They're just us from the future. Yeah, that'd be crazy. That would be nuts. I hope you guys are having a good day out there. So today I made a smoothie, which is uh, ice with banana and milk. And uh, I asked uh, chat GPT, I said, hey, you know, give me a calorie breakdown of a blended smoothie with just milk, ice and banana versus a milkshake. And uh, it was kind of impressive. So 10 ounces of milk, 170 calories. Medium-sized banana, 105 calories. So we're talking about 275 calories and, uh, and a good, good source of fiber because of the banana. And uh, a milkshake, 10 ounce milkshake, you're looking at about 380 calories. So again, one of the things with a milkshake, because you're already splurging, a lot of times you'll end up eating that milkshake with a burger and fries if you think about it. And if you need something to drink on top of that, you'll drink a soda on top of that. So when I'm blending a, a smoothie, I try to tell myself that my goodness, this is a great way to get away from the milkshakes, okay? It's not a cure-all, but it's a way to get you away from the milkshakes. And then in the future, if you ever wanted to get completely off of the smoothies, it's a lot easier to get off of a smoothie addiction than the milkshake addiction, if you know what I mean. So if you look at it from a Kaizen baby step point of view, start having a milkshake, but do it the way I do it. No sugar. You just, you're going to throw in a banana. You're going to throw in the, the milk, the ice, and you're going to make yourself a 10 ounce smoothie. There you go. And it tastes pretty decent too. If you want it real sweet, just get a yellow banana. And if you want it less and less sweet, especially if you're trying to wean, it, wean off sweets and sugar completely, you just get a more green banana. What's interesting is if you guys are actually avoiding sugar, and again, I'm talking processed sugars, you can still eat bananas and strawberries and all the fruit. But you don't want to eat it excessively. But here's the point I'm trying to make. If you're already three or four days into no sugar, 
like I am, you'll get to the point where you'll be able to taste sugar in, in things that you never thought possible. For example, cornflakes without sugar. You would never see that as a sweet cereal. You will three or four days into this because you're so used to tasting so many sugars on your tongue through the course of the day and through the course of your snacking that when you stop eating things like candy and donuts, um, your taste buds change. Your taste buds change. And you'll get to the point where even a green banana, you can taste sugar off of it. It's amazing because think about this. If you were to grab a green banana now and taste it, you'd be like, ooh, this isn't ripe enough. It's not ready. Trust me, there's plenty of sugar on that green banana. We just got to get you detoxed off the sugar for a little while. And it's not easy. I uh, have these Oreo Thins. They're like half the size of a normal Oreo. And uh, I've been sneaking one or two here and there. Again, I'm human, just like you. But I still obey the two-thirds rule. So even if I have one cookie, I'm drinking water and I'm walking. And that's what I'm trying to get you guys to do. There's no reason why you can't always do two-thirds of your diet constantly. And the key to success is we got to be able to go this 90 to 100 days as close to uh, perfect as possible. Another thing that you might be noticing if this is your third or fourth day walking or if you've been walking for a little while, you might notice that you naturally start getting faster at the walk. I've been getting real fast at this walk, boys and girls. So the uh, this morning, I was going to say the other day, but it was really this morning. They all blend together after a while, but I couldn't find my keys to take my morning walk. And by the way, as it heats up in the morning, I'm going to start recording in the mornings with you guys. But I couldn't find my key. And even though I live in a relatively safe neighborhood, we still do have the occasional suspect looking person walking by. So. I ended up not leaving the house till late and I ended up instead of a half hour walk like I like to take in the mornings, I was only able to take a 15 minute walk. Luckily I found my keys in time to take a 15 minute walk, but I decided to go on Amazon today and I purchased this thing called Esky, E-S-K-Y. And it's basically a keychain that fits on your keys and then you can push a button and it kind of beeps so you don't lose your keys. <laughs> So the reason I bring this up is one of these days you're going to want to go on a walk and you're not going to be able to find your wallet or your keys. And, you know, in the future when that happens, look up Esky, E-S-K-Y, on Amazon. I bought it for 12 bucks, so it'll be delivered tomorrow. So what I did there is uh, hopefully I'm making sure that I never have to miss my morning walk due to lost keys. And uh, some of us are notorious for losing our keys. I only lose my keys a couple times a year. But if you lose your keys once or twice a week, think about getting a key finder like that. They also have ones that are kind of shaped. Uh, the Esky that I got was kind of shaped round specifically for keys, but they also had some that are kind of rectangular and look like they would fit inside your wallet. So again, if you lose your wallet, if you, you lose your TV remote, this, that, and the other, you can connect this S key on it. And then you keep the other part by the base. It's kind of like a remote control. And then you press the button and beep, beep, beep. My, I'm over here, asshole. So the whole day today, I was going to say the whole day today it's not windy and then all of a sudden I come out to record and it's windy and then just like that as if God were listening the wind instantly stops go figure so you know how every day I talk about how there's nobody else here walking but me and don't get me wrong every day there's always one or two people but very few people well what I've noticed is that especially in the mornings, 
about 50% of the people that I see on the daily walking are truly walking their dog. And it got me to thinking, if you're dealing with uh, companionship issues, if you want to walk but you don't really like walking alone or the idea of walking alone and maybe my voice doesn't suffice, maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea for you to get a dog. And you don't necessarily have to get a puppy because let's be honest, with a puppy you're going to have to do some training and it might make walking you know, a little bit more challenging, at least at first. But it might not be a bad idea to maybe adopt a dog, you know? But you know, dog, dogs that you adopt are kind of like, kind of like people that go through the jail and prison experience. You want to make sure that they're not like hardcore. Because <laughs> I've met some dogs that have gone through the pound type system, and it's almost like they're they're not quite the same as, you know, the average dog that you get through a breeder or the newspaper or a friend, you know. So things to ponder. Hey, has anybody been getting a crazy amount of telemarketing calls lately? And it's weird. It, they used to sell they used to sell solar roofing, right? But I've noticed that lately they're changing. They're sending me this text that says USPS uh has an item for you with a bad address, please contact us. And it's like a group chat room, so it's an obvious scam of some sorts. And uh, I also get a lot of phone calls where they're trying to get me to sign up for Social Security, but you can tell it's kind of like a shady company. And I think they're from, I think they're from another country, if you know what I mean, because they don't sound like they're American by any means. And it's kind of scary because I'm hip to the game and I'm not going to give them my social security number and I'm not going to give them too much information, you know. But it's kind of scary because I know for a fact that we do have some elderly folks out there that are very lonely. They're more than willing to talk to people. They're a little bit gullible because maybe their senses aren't as honed as they were when they were younger. And so I could definitely see how these con artists can be, you know, basically getting their social security numbers and stealing their identity. And it got me thinking, you know, this year they, and I don't know what I mean by they, but I think you know what I mean by they, they say that uh, we're supposed to be hit by quite a few cyber attacks. And it's interesting because You know, once again, if you're walking for your entertainment, okay, you don't need your cell phone and you don't really need electricity for that. But I got to tell you, if there is a big cyber attack and the water is stopped or the utilities are off for, you know, more than a day or two, we are going to be in a lot of trouble. Because even something as simple as taking a walk, there are some people out there that just cannot stand the idea of life without their cell phone. And even us that walk, we're only tossing our cell phone for an hour. And this this channel is not about getting rid of your cell phone by any means. (laughs) I love my cell phone and I'm sure you guys do too. And it's funny because I know in my heart of hearts that if we didn't have cell phones, if we could go back to the 1990s and not ever have them, I would be willing to make that decision not only for me, but for the whole world. If we could go back and I had the power, I would set it up where none of us, and I mean none of us, had the internet or cell phone. Even if the military still did, because I believe the military had the internet back then. If we had it all to do over, I would make it where it didn't happen. But because of the fact that it did happen, You know, it's kind of indispensable. We need that bad boy now. What's interesting is how does access to the internet evolve? You can tell that they were trying to bring it on in the form of a watch, right? Because we have these Apple watches and we have these smart watches, but for some reason, it's just not really, it's not really coming to fruition. Now, don't get me wrong. 
there are people out there that very much do use their Apple Watch and their smartwatch, but not nearly as many as just use their phone, you know? I've got my uh, camera here and somebody right there has a camera too. They're taking pictures of the houses. Some of these houses do look very quaint and very pretty. And then some of these houses look not so great, but it is what it is. But you want to know something? Even if you live in a halfway ugly neighborhood, assuming it's safe enough to walk, go for a walk. I think you'll still enjoy the people in your neighborhood because a lot of times they're going to be a lot like you. Even if you can't stand them, they're a lot like you. So again, back to this cybercrime thing. Could you imagine if you woke up and you know your daily, I, I have a bank, uh, Citibank, where, excuse me, Chase Bank, where every day they send me, you know, my little daily, you know, hey, your balance is this, you know, here's your daily update on your account, right? Could you imagine if you got your daily account status update and it was like you have zero dollars in your account? Could you imagine how horrible that day would feel? And even though misery loves company, think about it. This is a situation where you don't want it to be a misery loves company. You want it to be just you because then there's a chance you could go to the bank and fight that. If it happened to you and thousands of others, you might be a thousandth in line, you know, to get that fixed and taken care of. So again, it's almost like if something horrible happens to you in the form of a cyber crime, it's almost like it'd be better for it just to be you. Because I just have a feeling if it happened to a bunch of people, it would take our government just forever to sort that out. At least if you're the only victim, potentially the bank can make you whole again, you know? But that is a scary thing to think of. One of the things that I've heard recommended, which probably isn't a horrible idea if you think about it, would be to diversify your, your bank. So, you know, maybe you have one or two banks or maybe you have one bank and one credit union. I think it might always be safe to have a little money on hand, not Fawny Willis money on hand, but you know, if you wanna have a, I don't know, maybe 500 to 1,000 bucks on hand. But uh, I gotta be honest with you. If I were to take my average of how much money I have on hand, it's about three or four dollars. I just have always been on thinking it's safer to have a debit card on you, you know? And, uh, and also money's just kind of dirty if you think about it. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I'm in favor of the coinless society. I'm, I'm not going that route by any means. I'm just saying that because we have coins and because we have paper money, I just kind of like to have a debit card, you know? And I know a lot of you are the same, so... And it doesn't mean that you or I are for a coinless, you know, moneyless, cashless society, whatever you want to call it. It is so beautiful today, and I wish you guys could feel the wind. It's like 73 degrees with a gentle wind, so it feels maybe closer to 70 degrees. And the sun is uh, peaking behind, from behind the clouds here and there, and then popping back behind the clouds, and just super, super nice. So back to what I was saying, what would you guys do? Can you maybe, if you think about it, Drop a line or two in the comments. Some of us would legit freak out. Some of us would try to remain calm because we know that no matter what we do, worrying and stress doesn't make things better. But then the rest of us would eventually start freaking out because, you know, even if you don't stress and you don't worry, you know, that's not exactly gonna help you get your money back, you know? <laughs> Now imagine this, step two. Step one is you wake up and you find out that your accounts have zero money in them. Step two, you realize that 
while your phone's utility still worked because the battery is still alive, the rest of the utilities in your house don't because it's a cyber attack on the electrical grid, right? You take your phone because it's connected to the network and then you realize the network is connected to the electrical grid in some way, shape, or form, or at least I assume it is. And so all of a sudden, even though your screen works, your phone doesn't. Now again, I could be wrong on that, and if I am, maybe put a comment in the, uh, put a line or two in the comments, right? But the only thing worse than having money taken out of your bank account is not being able to immediately call the bank, right? You mosey over to your kitchen and you open up the fridge and everything in the fridge still seems cold but from that point on every time you open the fridge you're letting out the last little bit of cold air that that remains necessary to keep that food somewhat fresh Hello. hi how's it going now here's the thing how long does that food stay fresh I imagine the fridge, especially if you take things from the fridge and put it in the freezer, I'd imagine it has the ability to stay fresh for a couple more hours to a, maybe a day or two uh, in the freezer. But ultimately, you're going to have to eat that food before it rots. And because we're so used to storms cutting out the utilities for a couple hours or a day at most, we're not going to rush to eat that food when maybe we should. But again, that immediate food in the fridge might be the least of our worries. When you turn on the water, does it still run? Potentially, I suppose, right? But how much longer before it's not being thoroughly cleaned? And does it ultimately stop? I mean, is there a, a tap somewhere down at the water plant? <laughs> Maybe we should know more about these things, huh? Maybe instead of YouTube, I should be studying what happens with the water in the city when it gets pumped to your house, right? But the point is, none of us think about this stuff. What could we do? We could have an extra 36 pack of water in one of the closets at the house. We could fill up our bathtub with water and drink bathtub water for the next month, right? I just don't know. I don't know at all because here's the thing, there is no clock on it. You don't know if the utilities and stuff are going to be out for a day, a week, a month, or a year. But I did hear one thing that was really scary. If we had an EMP attack that stretched the uh, whole country over and we were without utilities and stuff, within one year, 365 days, 90% of the populace would be no longer now that's creepy oh my god that's creepy but i'll tell you what maybe you and i during this 90 days oh, maybe we can practice a couple days of fasting so we can <laughs> we can be prepared and live one day longer than our brothers and sisters what do you think what do you think i think we should try it but not yet i'm not i'm not ready to try it yet i've tried fasting before and it was so miserable but it led me to something super positive. Instead of fasting, because I wanted to fast for two or three days and I ended up fasting for like three or four hours. But instead of fasting, what I decided to do was quit sugar. And I did, I've quit sugar twice. Both the times that I did this uh, 90 day challenge, so to speak, both times it started because I decided to quit sugar. Sugar is very tough to stop. For the first two or three days, you don't know if you want to stop or just take advantage of the fact that you didn't eat the day before and so starting up again. But I think the moral of the story is sugar is kind of like a drug. And every one of us started liking that drug when we were little. That's what makes it so difficult. And some of us have a lot of 
nostalgia moments with sugar. You might have cookies with your grandma. You might have a shake with your mom and dad. You might have had, uh, you know, you might have had a piece of cake on a birthday party at a restaurant with Wallace and Ladmo. Here in Arizona, if you're in your 40s or 50s, we grew up with the Wallace and Ladmo show. It was basically two guys, Wallace and Ladmo, and they basically had their own cartoon show on Channel 5 here in Arizona. And if you go to any Arizonan that's in their 40s and you say, hey, do you know who Wallace and Ladmo are? They will very much say yes, and unless they're a machine, they will probably smile because everybody loved Wallace and Ladmo. And everybody still does love Wallace and Ladmo. Do you remember Wallace and Ladmo? Yeah. Yeah, see? I was just... <laughs> Everybody loved Wallace and Ladmo. You know, um, we don't count our blessings enough. Since I've been holding this camera just for a couple of days now, I've already had three or four neighbors come up to me and say hi. One was this gal here. Another was a gal that I gave a hug to the other day, and, uh, and then a boy on a bike. And I think there have been others too. And the reason I say I'm blessed and the reason I tell you to get out and walk around your neighborhood that you bought into your neighborhood is because those are potential friends, you know? Now, don't get me wrong, as a 47-year-old, you don't wanna have friends, be friends with kids on bikes, okay? That's not what I'm saying. I think you know what I'm saying. You buy into the neighborhood. Your neighborhood is full of really good people. And that person that you might want to walk with you in the future might be one of those friends that you befriend on your walk through your neighborhood. So it's really a beautiful thing when people say good morning and say good evening and how you doing and hey, you got your camera out. Those are really neat things. And uh, if you've ever been contemplating pulling out a camera and maybe doing your own YouTube channel, I say go for it. You know, whatever makes you happy. You gotta know the odds, and that's one of the things that I've been studying. Apparently the odds are slim and none that you're gonna make anything out of it, but I figure I have an advantage here. I walk every day regardless, and I routinely go on challenges where I challenge myself to quit eating sugar. And I've seen how my body can go from 185 pounds and very pudgy to 150 pounds and kind of high school skinny, you know? It's one of those things that, uh, again, if you ever want to try it, put on your walking shoes, rewind this tape, let's go for a walk. It's always about half an hour with me. How are you? I'm good. It's so beautiful today. Have a nice night. I love this neighborhood. I'm a little disappointed in how life goes because when I was a kid, this neighborhood was absolutely gorgeous. And as you get older, you kind of appreciate how gorgeous it used to be, you know? And if you look at yourself in the mirror, there might be a piece of you that remembers that not too long ago, you might have felt gorgeous, or you might have felt good looking, or you might have felt much better about yourself than you do now. If that describes you, put on your walking shoes, get outside, let's go for a walk. Walking, uh, walking kind of gives me hope. Because if you look at walking as a distance, you know, hey, a 30, 30 minute walk, let's say it's a nice slow walk, that, that, that's at least a mile, right? If you do that with me every day, then that means we're trekking for 30 miles a month, basically. And I think that's pretty darn impressive, you know? And so maybe we'll call it the 30 mile club, right? When you can walk with Jesse for a month straight, you'll be a part of the 30 mile club. And maybe you could put that in the comment section. 
And if you walk with me for one day, you're part of the one mile club, right? Walk with me for a week, you're part of the seven mile club. I would absolutely love to find out that I have people in the 30 mile club with me. And if we do this for a year straight, and I am gonna do it for a year straight, but if you do this with me for a year straight, maybe one day you can tell me that you're part of the 365 club. And I'll even let you do makeups if you miss a day, right? You can even turn in your extra credit and make up a day. I absolutely love walking, and even if my life outside of walking never gets even a little bit better, because I'm always hoping for better, and I'm hoping you are too, but even if my life never gets better, if I can help anybody out there enjoy their future a little bit more by getting a little bit more healthy, then so be it. So be it. God, that would suck though, wouldn't it? All of a sudden I've got a bunch of listeners that are just killing it in life and I'm still getting run over. I guess with a lot of YouTubers, they try to come at you from a pillar of authority. I know this plan works. I've done it twice before. I'm gonna do it right now, right before your eyes. But the reality is, uh, it hasn't necessarily made me a more successful human being outside of walking, you know? Sometimes we have to do things for the betterment and for our best interest, even if it doesn't necessarily reflect in the score. And when things don't go your way in life, I know that you're supposed to get be above and beyond that and you're supposed to be the best you and that way you can accept things better when they do go your way in life, right? But the reality is some of us just routinely get beat down. And when you routinely get beat down, well, as horrible as this sounds, life goes on and you still gotta, you still gotta get out and and do this little walk we call life. I used to love that song. You do the walk. You do the walk of life. Yeah, you do the walk of life. If I had an odometer and I tracked all the miles that I ever walked, minus steps, because again, I don't think it counts when you go to the bathroom at work 25 times, right? But if I actually counted the miles that I've walked, God, it would be really impressive. I've walked quite a few through the decades, quite a few miles. I think what started it for me is I always walked to school when I was little, and so many of us did. Hi. But so few of us do now. I'm telling you, I, there's a school right here. I went to this school here many moons ago and the mornings it used to be hundreds of kids walking to school it's just not that anymore would you buy a dog if you knew a dog could save your life just by taking care of that dog you know in your heart of hearts that dog needs a walk every day and ideally he might need two walks maybe even three on the weekend and you were, you were responsible enough to go ahead and take him and never miss a walk, he would probably increase your life by a year or two. They would be the miserable years at the end, but still. Wouldn't that be funny? If every year of exercise, it prolonged your miserable years at the end of your life by three years, that would be so hilarious. Because in a weird way, that is kind of what it does. If you live to be uh, old enough, you're gonna hurt. You're gonna suffer. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't, if you think about it. If you're healthy and you live 10 years longer than you should have, you're living those 10 years at the end. Those are the miserable years. And they're miserable in more ways than just your health because Think about this. 
most of my family has passed away. Could you imagine if you lived to be a hundred? Now you're talking some of your kids and your grandkids, everybody might be passed away. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, I've noticed that most people that are close to a hundred, there's a certain pride they take in it and they all seem very happy, don't they? You very rarely meet a 99 year old that says, oh my God, I wish God would have taken me 20 years ago. You know, it just doesn't really happen. So you guys did your homework that I gave you from yesterday. Right now, let's go over some things that we should have accomplished by now. You should have more than one route in your neighborhood mapped for time. You don't need to necessarily map it for, you know, turn left here, turn right there, because you'll know that as you're walking. But you should know this route is about a 30 minute walk. This route is about a 20 minute walk, etc., etc. You also should be doing your food audit, which means I want to really know on a piece of paper. And again, when I say I, it's you. You really want to know on a piece of paper what you had for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, what you had for your snacks between breakfast and lunch, and what you had for snacks between lunch and dinner. And then yesterday, I gave you another little baby step. I want you to get three plastic bottles of water, you know, the 16 ounce bottles of water. And I want you to drink one at 10 a.m., 1 p.m., and then 4 p.m., okay? In another couple days, In another couple days, especially if I don't remember, I want you to up that to where you're not only drinking the bottle of water those three times during the day, but you're also drinking a bottle of water with your lunch and with your dinner. Because I think we want to have you drinking more than just three bottles of liquid. I don't want you to think, hey, I got my three bottles of water in, I'm good. No, you need to drink and stay hydrated. And we're ultimately going to be quitting the sodas. As a matter of fact, if you like soda and if you like sweet tea like I did and still do, I will love sweet tea till the day I pass. But if you like sweet tea, what I want you to do is make a commitment for the next 90 days to not drink any more soda, drink the sweet tea, okay? And that's just a step down. You're not gonna be drinking sweet tea for the whole 90 days. That's just a step down that I want you to do immediately if you can. And again, if you can't, you don't have to do my diet and exercise plan. You could just walk with me. And if you're uh, unable to walk and you don't really feel like giving up your soda and you don't feel like doing any dieting or exercising, you can still vent with me. Because trust me, I like to talk about bills and how unfair shit is. <laughs> If you are trying to copy exactly what I've been doing, then for the past couple days, you've been going on a half hour walk with me and you've been drinking water and avoiding sugar. And although there might not be a reward for that in the meantime, in the long while, there are gonna be some huge rewards from that. Because right now I've been walking and checking out my uh, stomach and my body in the mirror and I don't feel like I'm losing any weight and there's a little piece to me that says I wonder if maybe I'm officially too old to lose weight easily. But I don't think that's it at all. I don't think that's it at all.